Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to cover regarding cellulitis including erysipelas versus skin abscess. Before we start, there is a disclaimer. This video is for informative purposes only. I am advising you to refer to the main textbook or sources that is used in each teaching center respectively. Thank you. Now let's begin. I hope that in this video, you will be able to answer the question regarding the difference between cellulitis versus abscess in terms of clinical presentation, common organism in each diagnosis, the management and differential diagnosis of each diagnosis. If you are ready, now let's get started. Introduction Cellulitis, abscess or both are among the common skin and soft tissue infection. Cellulitis, which include erysipelas, manifest as an area of skin edema, edema, and warm. It develops as a result of bacteria entry via bridges in the skin barrier. Based on this picture, cellulitis involves the deeper dermis and subcutaneous fat. There is no clear demarcation between involved and uninvolved tissue. For erysipelas, it involves the upper dermis, and there are clear demar demarcation between involved and uninvolved tissue. Again, this picture shows the region involved in cellulitis, erysipelas, and skin abscess. A skin abscess is a collection of pus within the dermis or subcutaneous piece. Predisposing, predisposing factors associated with risk of cellulitis and or all skin abscess include 1. Skin barrier disruption due to trauma, example in abrasion wound, penetrating wound, pressure ulcer, inside bed, and injection during drug, where it becomes abuse. 2. Skin inflammation, example eczema, radiation therapy, psoriasis. 3. Edema due to impact lymphatic drainage. Lymphatic compromise may occur following surgical procedure, example saphenous venectomy or lymph node dissection. 4. Edema due to venous insufficiency. 5. Obesity. 6. Immunosuppression, example in an unfrontal diabetes mellitus patient or in HIV patient or in AIDS patient. 7. Pre-existing skin infection, such as tinea pedis, ampetigo, varicella. Microbiology. The common causes of cellulitis is by beta-hemolytic streptococci. Group A Streptococcus, Streptococcus pyogenes, and Step aureus. Majority of erysipelas organism are caused by beta hemolytic streptococci. The less common causes of cellulitis include Haemophilus influenza type B that cause buccal cellulitis or cellulitis of the cheek. Costidium and non forming and aerobes that lead to crepitant cellulitis. Pastorella multicida in animal bites, example either dog bite or cat bite. For skin abscess, the common causative organism is step aureus, but it can be caused more than one organism. Sterile abscess can occur in, set, in setting of injected irritants. Sterile abscess can turn into a hard, solid lesion as they scar. Risk factor for methicillin resistant step aureus MRSA infection. A. Healthcare associated risk factor include recent hospitalization, residence in a long term care facility, recent surgery, hemodialysis. B. Additional risk factor for MRSA infection include MRSA again, methicillin resistant step aureus, HIV infection, inject, injection of a drug usage in 
intravenous drug abuser, prior antibiotic use, where bacteria with develop resistant. C. Factors associated with methicillin resistant step aureus outbreak include you must know that this occur usually in a overcrowded places. Example in a incarceration. Incarceration means is a confinement in a jail or prison, in military service, sharing sport equipment, sharing needles, razors or other sharp objects. Diagnosis of cellulitis. So, how do you diagnose? The diagnosis is based on clinical manifestation. Patient, patient presented with fever, pain, redness of the affected skin, with no clear demarcation between the involved and uninvolved tissue. Cellulitis may present with or without purulence, purulent drainage or exudate in absence of durable abscess. Erysipelas is non-purulent. Blood culture should be performed in patients with systemic toxicity, extensive skin involvement, Patient with underlying comorbidities, example in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus patient, HIV patient, AIDS patient, cancer patient, in animal bite patient, and or or recurrent cellulitis to find out the causative organism via blood due to bacteremia. Radiography examination can be useful in excluding abscess on osteomyelitis as a complication of cellulitis. Diagnosis of erysipelas, usually patient presented by acute symptom with systemic manifestation including fever, chills and severe malaise and headache. In erysipelas, there is clear demarcation between involved and uninvolved tissue. There may be a risk, advancing border or erythema with central clearing. Classical description of erysipelas is patient has a butterfly pattern. Additional manifestation of cellulitis and erysipelas include lymphagitis and enlargement of regional lymph nodes. Edema surrounding the hair follicles may lead to dimpling in the skin creating an appearance of an orange peel texture, PUD orange. How to diagnose an abscess? Diagnosis is again based on clinical manifestation. A skin abscess is a collection of pus within the dermis or subcutaneous space. It manifests as a painful, fluctuant, atomatous nodule with or without surrounding cellulitis. Spontaneous drainage of purulent material may occur. Fever, chills and systemic toxicity are rare. A skin abscess may develop via deep infection of a hair follicle known as a pharyncal or bone which reflects extension of purulent material into the dermis and subcutaneous tissue. Multiple pharyncles can coalesce to form carbuncles, which may be associated with systemic symptom. Radiographic examination via ultrasonography is to, is to determine whether a skin abscess is present or not. Okay, I am doing a summary regarding the difference between the cellulitis and abscess. In summary, I divide it based on the duration, pain, the symptom, the size of area involved, whether it's localized or not, the findings during palpation, whether patient or whether present of pus or not, the organism involved, radiological assessment, and lastly, different in management between cellulitis and abscess. So, the characteristic characteristic of cellulitis and abscess the difference is in duration acute is in cellulitis 
it can occur within 3 to 5 days. In abscess, usually sometimes is chronic presentation, usually chronic presentation, more than 5 days, or we call it a longer time frame. Patient about the pain, insulitis is more severe and generalized pain associated with systemic symptom. In abscess, there will be a localized pain and rarely associated with systemic symptom. In size, cellulitis it involve larger area, but in abscess it involve a smaller area. For localization, in cellulitis there is a diffuse border. There is no clear demarcation between involved or uninvolved tissue. In abscess, there is a well-defined border. For palpation, in cellulitis, you might feel a doughy to indurated with increase in skin temperature. In abscess, you will feel a swelling with fluctuant region. In cellulitis, there is no presence of pus for non purulent cellulitis. For abscess, there will be presence of pus. In cellulitis, mostly organisms are aerobic. Uh, in abscess, there usually is anaerobic or polymicrobial or atypical. Example, TB abscess. For radiological investigation, X-ray is helpful in determining whether patient have osteomyelitis or not, or throughout a complication of cellulitis. Whereby in abscess, we will confirm via ultrasound, but it usually is operator dependent. And lastly, regarding the management, cellulitis usually the management is only antibiotic with oral or intravenous infusion. But in abscess, surgical intervention apart from antibiotic is indicated. Usually, we will do incision and drainage for patient. What is the differential diagnosis of cellulitis? Cellulitis is often confused with other infection or non-infectious illness. Rapidly progressive erythema with signs of systemic toxicity should consider severe exam severe infection. Example, A. Nepotizing fasciitis, B. Toxic shock syndrome, C. Gas gangrene or myonecrosis. Other infection, example, 1. Septic arthritis. Cellulitis may overlie a septic joint. Clinical manifestation include joint pain, swelling, warm and limited range of movement. The diagnosis of septic arthritis is established based on synovial fluid examination. 2. Cellulitis 2. Osteomyelitis Osteomyelitis may underlie an area of cellulitis, especially in setting of chronic soft tissue infection that fails to improve with antibiotic Therapy Non-infectious masquerades of unilateral cellulitis include A. Contact dermatitis The difference between contact dermatitis and cellulitis is that contact dermatitis are more pruritic and patient will have history of exposure to allergen example flower etc etc Reaction is limited to the site of contact. Patient usually might associated with history of burning or stinging. B. In acute gout. Acute gouty arthritis associated with severe pain, warm, erythema, and swelling overlying a single joint. The diagnosis is established by synovial fluid analysis which should demonstrate the characteristic uric crystal of gout or the calcium pyrophosphate crystal of pseudogout. Additional clues suggestive of, cloud, suggestive of gout include involvement of the first metatarsophalangeal joint, MTPJ, prior 
self-limiting attacks of arthritis and presence of tophi. C. Drug reaction A drug reaction present with an erythematous maculopapular rash that involves the trunk and proximal extremities. It may be accompanied by pruritus, low-grade fever, and mild isnophilia. The diagnosis is suspected in a patient receiving drug treatment who present with a rash of recent onset, sometimes immediately or within 24 hours of starting drug regime. D. Deep vein thrombosis, DVT As described in my previous video, cellulitis is a differential diagnosis of DVT and vice versa. To confirm DVT, we need to proceed with ultrasound doppler evaluation. E. Erythema ab igne. It is an erythematous pigmented dermatosis resulting from repeated exposure to moderate heat or infrared radiation. The diagnosis is established clinically and may be confirmed by biopsy. Differential diagnosis of skin abscess include 1. Epidermoxis It is a skin-colored cutaneous nodule. The diagnosis is usually clinical based on the clinical appearance of a discrete cyst or nodule, often with a central punctum that is freely movable on palpation. Epidermoxis can be infected. 2. Folliculitis Folliculitis refers to inflammation of one or two hair follicles. The diagnosis is based on clinical presentation and examination. 3. Nodular lymphagitis It is a nodular cutaneous swelling along the course of the lymphatic channel. What are the complications of cellulitis? 1. There is always this is uh, there is already bacteria in the bloodstream causing bacteremia and if not treated properly it will lead to septicemia and septicemic shock 2. Prolonged duration of cellulitis that is not properly treated or partially treated will still cause organism to be present at the area and lead to bone infection that means osteomyelitis Infection of the surrounding nearby structure, example lymph node, will lead to lymphagitis. 4. Endocarditis It occur because of the bacteremia. 5. Meningitis Infection of the meninges. 6. Severe cellulitis with feminine organism that can lead to necrotizing fasciitis. Back to the earlier question, I hope you will be able to answer regarding the difference between cellulitis versus abscess in terms of clinical presentation, common organism in each diagnosis, management and differential diagnosis of each diagnosis. Okay everyone, that's all for, the, for today. I hope you have learned something from this video. Till we meet again, take care and bye.